What is the simplest form of life? Well, it's a cell. Every living thing is either a cell or made up of cells. The simplest cells are bacteria, and cyanobacteria are the simplest self-sustaining form of life. During the 19th century, not much was known about the complexity of cells. Thanks to many groundbreaking discoveries, we now know that the simplest cells are not simple at all. Join us now as we dive into one of the simplest forms of life. Exactly what triggered life here is still a mystery, but there are several theories. The most common one is that life began purely by accident in pools of primordial soup full of chemicals called amino acids. These molecules would have collided at random for millions of years until the perfect combination just happened. The ultimate lucky break that started the chain of life. And the water has become a chemical soup. It's impossible to know how or when, but somehow these chemicals have come together to create life. The water is now full of microscopic organisms. These single-celled bacteria are the earliest forms of life on Earth. But it is an astounding fact that starting from nothing more complicated than rock and sand, the process of evolution by natural selection gave rise to eventually us with big brains capable of understanding the process that brought us into existence. The deepest microfossils on record are cyanobacteria. We find them in quiet pools and in the hottest acidic hydrothermal vents. Even the simplest free-living organisms require the tiniest organic machines imaginable, nanomachines. Here are a few of those nanomachines. The animation is based on an incredible series of scientific discoveries. The bacterial cell membrane separates the working machinery inside the cell from a hostile environment. This flexible, phospholipid bilayer self-assembles. The cell itself generates all of these phospholipids, approximately 10 million per cell. Their heads love water and their tails hate it. Add some of the nanomachines which fit in this layer and you have the start of a simple living cell importing raw material and exporting waste. The sun is the most powerful, reliable energy source available. Cyanobacteria have rafts of nanomachines working closely together to harness light. These are the photosynthetic nanomachines called thylakoids. The light energy is absorbed by the pigment where electrons are boosted into a higher energy state. These energized electrons are passed on to chlorophyll and a series of proteins where water is oxidized with the release of oxygen. 
This creates a proton concentration gradient, which powers a proton pump called ATP synthase. The most common power source for nanomachines is adenosine triphosphate, ATP for short. ATP stores chemical energy in the third phosphate bond. When this bond breaks, it releases energy to whatever it is attached to. ATP is produced by a tiny motor rotating at up to 7,000 revolutions per minute. The greater proton concentration on one side of the machine fuels the motor. Here, low energy ADP combines with a phosphate molecule making ATP. The motor is made from 13 subunits, here shown from the top. How these nanomachines are made starts with the instructions, DNA. Cyanobacteria have circular DNA made of several million base pairs, so it's way too big to fit in the tiny space allowed. It must be squeezed 1,000 fold to fit in comfortably. DNA is first folded into loops by DNA binding proteins, reducing it tenfold. Then DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 1 supercoils it into a tiny bundle like an over-twisted rubber band. Reproduction is essential for life. The complexity is astonishing. DNA is made of a pair of complementary strands. One strand is referred to as 3 prime, 5 prime, and the other 5 prime, 3 prime. The 3 prime, 5 prime strand is copied by DNA polymerase 2. Enzymes called primases mark the reverse strand at short intervals, and DNA polymerase 3 fills in the gap. These are called Okasaki fragments. DNA polymerase 1 fills in the small gaps left by the primases. And finally, the DNA ligase confirms all bonds. DNA is replicated at up to 500 nucleotides per second. Approximately 1 in 10,000 nucleotides, DNA polymerase makes a mistake. When this occurs, the growing strand is shifted to a second active site where the error is corrected. The polymerase then shifts back into position, allowing polymerization to continue. As a result, DNA polymerase actually makes a mistake about one time in only 100 million nucleotide pairs. The regulation of protein synthesis in cyanobacteria is in the DNA code itself. It can adjust to a changing environment according to its needs. One example of a regulating mechanism is the synthesis of the amino acid tryptophan. All of the 20 amino acids must be manufactured and all must be left-handed as opposed to the 50-50 mixture that's found in nature. If there is not enough tryptophan in the cell, the repressor protein cannot block the promoter gene, allowing RNA polymerase to attach to the promoter gene, resulting in five enzymes making tryptophan. When enough tryptophan accumulates and one binds to a repressor protein, the protein blocks the promoter gene and shuts down tryptophan synthesis. The genes for the proteins just described are copied by the nanomachine called DNA-directed RNA polymerase, which makes messenger RNA called mRNA. 
Shown here, the copy gene is stretched out to the left. The blue molecule is the polymerase erasing up the gene. It is unzipping the two DNA strands as it moves. The yellow chain snagging out the top is an mRNA copy of DNA. RNA bases flow through the intake hole. Like amino acids, nucleic acids, the building blocks of DNA and RNA, have to be made by the cyanobacteria itself, but only right-handed versions. You are watching the process called transcription in real time. In nature, protein synthesis happens only inside a living cell, catalyzed by ribosomes. Ribosomes have one large and one small subunit that surround the messenger RNA. Amino acids, the little red molecules on the bigger green molecules, are called transfer RNA. The small ribosomal subunit ratchets the messenger RNA through three letters at a time, known as a codon. Each codon matches a corresponding anticodon on the bottom of the transfer RNA molecule. The larger ribosomal subunit joins the amino acids together in a polypeptide chain. In an active cell, thousands of ribosomes are constantly at work. Inside a crowded cell, polypeptide chains need help folding into their active shape. Protein folding is aided by a class of proteins called chaperones. ATP activates chaperones, causing them to bind and bend the newly made chain into an active protein. A second class of barrel-shaped chaperones are chaperonins. They come in different sizes, made of multiple subunits, and process a small percentage of protein. An unfolded or misshapen protein is inserted into the cavity with the assistance of ATP. ATP causes the chaperonin to expand, fold, and release the protein spontaneously. But it is an astounding fact that starting from nothing more complicated than rock and sand, the process of evolution by natural selection gave rise to eventually us, with big brains capable of understanding the process that brought us into existence. The simplest form of life requires these nanomachines. Time does not allow an exhaustive presentation of all nanomachines found in cyanobacteria. Losing any one of these nanomachines would ultimately kill it. Life moves fast in the nano world. Complex proteins have a severely limited active existence measured in minutes to hours under the best of conditions.